Oh, hi, Her. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, nice to see you. I'm so nice. sorry about all this delay. Oh, no, no worries. I know you're probably super busy doing a lot of press, but I'm so excited to be talking to you today. I feel like you're one of the artists that I've like been listening to from like the beginning of their, of their career. So I'm like such a huge fan and really, really excited to be interviewing you today. Um, like, I've been listening to you probably since you first dropped your first um, mixtape or compilation uh like six years ago or so and when you first dropped this mixtape there was a sort of mystery to you um you kind of kept your identity anonymous often hiding behind these like beautiful dark sunglasses even we saw some of those themes in your earlier music videos like an avenue where you'll be driving like you don't really see your face when we see like a a profile of the sunglasses um and then i vividly re like remember listening to your music and Googling like, yo, who is her? Like, who is this person? <laughs> and then fast forward to like now and today, although the sunglasses have been completely gone away, we are seeing more of you. We know who you are. Um, do you kind of think it was difficult to maintain that sense of mystery um, now that you're kind of more amplified in the spotlight? Or do you think it was just like part of like nature's course or the course of your career you knew that, you know, it's going to happen eventually? Well, you know, I see it as this, in the beginning, um, the mystery and, you know, kind of hiding behind, you know, shadows and side profiles and glasses, it was really more so about people focusing on the music and not wanting, you know, my looks or like anything like that to be the focus. Like I really wanted my music and my message to be the forefront and to be the thing that people focus on. And so I knew eventually, you know, if I did that, then I would absolutely organically like show more of myself and people would get to know me more and see more of me but um you know it, it wasn't a, a matter of like wanting to stay in the shadows like I, I definitely am a private person and wanted to stay very private like I don't like to put all my business out there like I just you know that just ain't me you know so that, that was the idea and then um more recently I, I just and learning, you know, how much do I want to give? How much do I keep for myself? And organically, I just feel like it's easier to connect to the person that you, you know, you you listen to and when you see a little bit more of them and you get to know them as a person. So um, yeah, there, there's a there's a line there, but I absolutely felt like, you know, eventually um, I would show myself a little bit more. Yeah, awesome. Well, we, we're, we're glad you're doing that. <laughs> um, so you just dropped your first official studio album, um, Back of My Mind. Even though you've kind of been putting out hits after hits for years now, um, how, I guess, how did you know that this would be like the official studio album? Like, did you go in already thinking, okay, I'm ready. This is going to be the one. What, what, what was your thought process on that? Well, I felt like, you know, I had released what, basically four or five EPs and then combine them. Um, and it just felt like, okay, now I can officially work towards, you know, after everything I've accomplished and tours and everything, I finally took the time to really work towards an album because I've been touring since 2017, a year after volume one dropped. So I never took that time to really dig into an album. And um, of course I, I always wanted to. So this time it was really like, all right, I'm going to make a full body of work that represents everything, not just a specific time or a cohesive sound. Like now people have seen me play guitar. People understand me a little bit more as an artist. Now I can make a full body of work and people will get it, you know, because if I release this in 2017, I don't think people would understand. It, it would be very overwhelming. You know, you, you have to kind of slowly reveal, you know, as I have myself. So um, that, that was the idea. But um yeah, it's been a long time coming. And some of these songs I wrote a while ago and um, I wanted them to be on this project just because it represents me as a whole and not just a, not just a piece. Right, yeah, my next question was kind of gonna be, so how long were you working on this project and like, how was it trying to finalize it amid the pandemic? A little stressful, um, no, <laughs> but you know, working on this project, there, it's been like over the past two years, you know, the meat of it, but there were certain songs that I had never released that I wrote in like 2017 and 2018 that I felt like were perfect, you know, on this album. So I 
decided to put them on there. Songs that come through that was written in 2017 or 2018 and for anyone was written in 2017. So um, it's been a, a work in progress. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely was a hard thing to, to get it finalized, finished, mixed, mastered because it just kept changing and like the sequence is everything to me. I really wanted it to be special. So it, it was a lot of work. Right. Yeah, this album has been like my, my go-to on my drives into work every morning. <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> yes. So um, recently it was kind of revealed that you are almost in a girl band with Kehlani and Zendaya. <laughs> Any truth to that? Or what's the story behind that? All right. So it wasn't a girl band. It was um, me Me and Kehlani were actually already in a girl Well, me and um, uh, this this guy, Dylan Wiggins, who's a really incredible producer, musician, artist. Um, he's actually Dwayne Wiggins from Tony Tony Tone's son. And um, now he works with Rafael Sadiq a lot. I know that. That's his uncle. And um, we, we uh, had a band. We, we performed together when we were really little, like six or seven years old. And he, I think, went to the same school as Kehlani. They grew up in the same like city. They grew up in Oakland. I grew up outside of Oakland. And um, Kehlani ended up in the band. And we were called Pop Life. And so it was me and Kehlani, like basically just the lead singers. And I used to play bass and like we would sing Jasmine Sullivan songs. We would sing Prince songs. And I think at one point I remember, you know, Zendaya was coming to like our rehearsals and she was going to be in the band, but then it didn't work out or, or something. And it, so it was just me and Kehlani. But um, Zendaya also grew up in Oakland um, around Kehlani and Dylan and, and all these other kids. And I was kind of like, you know, the, the kid that joined in, um, you know, coming from Vallejo. But um we're all just Bay kids, and um, obviously Zendaya, you know, loves music. Kehlani loves music. Kehlani's a huge artist now, and we're all doing our thing. But uh, at one point, yeah, we were all just just kids, and our parents wanted us to to be in a group together. It's interesting that all of you are like superstars now. <laughs> yeah, hey, you just never know, <laughs> right? It's crazy. All right, so now 2021 is, has already been a year of many accolades for you. Uh, two Grammy Awards this year and an Academy Award. Congratulations. <laughs> and now you're up for two BET Awards, uh, Best Female R&B Pop Artist and the Dr. Bobby Jones Best Gospel Inspirational Song uh, mm -hmm. for Hold Us Together. Yes. How, how does being nominated here and potentially winning here differ from the, differs from the other awards that, that you won? BET Awards, you know, it's a stage for us. It's for us where we celebrate us. And I think this year we're celebrating Black women. It's like the year of the Black woman, which is extra special. And I just think BET has always known, you know, like they, they've always celebrated us. And I know just personal experience with BET, like they've always supported me and my career since the very beginning. Like this year, the BET Awards lands on my birthday. And um, 11 years ago, it was on my birthday and Jesse Collins was producing it. And I actually introduced Alicia and I sang like a minute of Fallen on the stage. So it's like a full circle moment for me. Wow. But I started to say, you know, BET has always supported young talent amazing black talent um and and, and yeah it, it's just a platform that's for us and and that celebrates us and i think it's it's just special to know no matter where i go no matter what stages i i i hit no matter what type of music i do and who i perform with i can always come back and know that i have the foundation of my own community and my own people that are going to love me and support me no matter what i do right exactly exactly and speaking of additional accolades. Um, 2019, you kind of made history of being the first woman to own and curate a music festival. The like, right, exactly, exactly. And speaking of additional accolades, um, 2019, you kind of made history of being the first woman to own and curate a music festival, the Lights On Festival. So yeah. are we going to see that coming back soon? Oh, it's coming back this year. And oh. I don't give away too much but um you know I, I it was a huge success in 2019 I didn't expect it I felt like I, I threw the coolest party ever so we're gonna bring it back it's gonna be amazing it's gonna right. be so much dope talent and some familiar artists and it's, it's gonna be great it's gonna be a celebration of R&B oh awesome can't wait, <laughs> can't wait. You there. <laughs> for sure okay so my last round of questions is a little fun round um okay, right. light <laughs> it's super light but um just some like questions about you that maybe people might not know her. Okay, so what is your favorite song to perform? 
my favorite song to perform oh i know it's gonna change because I'm, I'm ready to perform this new album um, <laughs> I, I will say like uh, a song like bloody waters i've been really excited to perform but um i think best part might be my favorite song to perform yes daniel yeah. caesar yeah, that's when I see all the couples like get closer and everybody's singing along and it's just a sweet like moment and every everybody just, you know, they melt kind of when they hear the song. So I think that's my favorite song. Sidebar, I noticed Due To Me wasn't on the album. Uh, and that's because I'm releasing a reggae project. Hey, yes, I'm here for it. <laughs> here for it. Coming, I've been coming. feeling the vibes. The, the joint with Skip Marley. Oh yeah. And then the Wiz Kid joint. Yes, those are like on my like morning playlists. I listen to Smile every morning on my way to work. Like it just gets oh, me in a good mood. Oh, I'm glad to hear. <laughs> okay, so my next one question is, uh, who is your dream collaborator, dead or alive? Oh, honestly, everybody's been talking about it. I've been talking about it for years. I, I will say, um, of course, Prince would have been my dream collab. You know, I, I really wish I could have got to work with him. I got to see him live, but um, that's someone I really want to work with. But I think person that I I know we would make something really, really amazing is Drake. Because he's, you know, he's literally there would be, you know, no volume one without Drake. So I think we would create something really incredible. Yeah. I'm here for that collab. <laughs> okay, so when did you know you made it? When did I know I made it? Um, that's a good question. I still don't be feel. I still be feeling like, wow, am I really here? I mean, you know, an Oscar would solidify, a Grammy definitely solidified, but I don't know. It's like when the people around you, you know, start acting different and they start being like, oh my gosh, like wow i saw you here i saw you there like like when your own family starts kind of getting nervous or like starts <laughs> around you and they be acting different that's kind of what i know but uh, yeah. so. okay okay <laughs> makes sense okay so what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working my favorite thing to do when i'm not working work no I'm just kidding <laughs> truth <laughs> um I, let me think i really love spending time with my family like i have a little sister and i just when i'm with her like she grounds me so much like i'm just me you know with her and, and that, that's where i'm like the most comfortable but i love being in nature like just chilling um yeah i, I don't know it's, it's really good with my family anything with my family right that's sweet um and my last fun question is if you weren't a musician what would you be doing for a living you know, honestly, I would probably be in the medical field. I couldn't imagine really? myself doing anything else. But, you know, I have an Asian mother. So, like, when you have an Asian mom, like, they expect you to, like, go to college and be, like, a nurse or, like, a doctor. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, at one point in high school, she was like, you should be a pharmacist. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, could go to college. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, they make $200,000 a year. And, you know, you'd be, you'd be great. You'd be could be a pharmacist it's easy I was like oh okay all right yeah maybe <laughs> but, uh, yeah it didn't work out being a pharmacist right. my dream being a pharmacist it didn't work out <laughs> but I think I think you're in a good place now so. <laughs> <laughs> well well thank you for joining us um that was my last question it was, it was a pleasure to speak with you um I'm wow. a fan we're a fan here at Ball Alert and um just want to congratulate you on all your success thus far we know that you are going to do even more amazing things. Oh, thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right. Bye. Bye.